Hello everyone and welcome to another set of Zero K Expedition replays. I'm your host Dominic or Chad if you're whichever you prefer, and we are starting out with a match between Dan Warrior and Bloa on Fairyland. And we're going in for Cloaky versus Bloa's shield bots, and I actually haven't seen this play out on Fairyland in a long time. Not gonna lie, Fairyland has been pretty well dominated by at least one vehicle or vehicle style, well, yeah, vehicle factory, so rover, tank, whatever, that I haven't actually seen bots used directly, or spiders get used as well, but yeah, just basic shield versus cloaky. I'm guessing largely because of the shield buffs. I mean, there was a patch two weeks ago that mass- well, it massively buffed shield. It just- it helped a bit here and there. Increased felon health, increased banded DPS a little bit. Like, it was just generally a, a bunch of little bits of good stuff for shield bots. And so we've been seeing more shield bots. We saw them more right after the patch came out two weeks ago. And I'm not surprised that we're still seeing them, that they're still pretty viable. At any rate, we will see how this plays out, because of course, Bloa is playing them, they're not necessarily going to be able to win. That's down to the game, and I I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. Obviously, if I did, I wouldn't... Well, I wouldn't tell you, but I also <laughs> do, as a rule, not cast games that I have seen. I will... Like, these are all blind, so again, if... If you have a really cool match that you want me to see... You're gonna have to tell me. I I won't have found it just by, like, trawling through the replays and pre-screening them all. So, yeah, I, I just try to guess based on... If they're reasonably long and the players are reasonably skilled, then it's probably going to be a good match. And already starting out... Blow, why are you not moving this? The, the convict, it's dying! Well, I mean, Dan... Okay, Dan Warrior got a free kill. Good for Dan Warrior. They got... They got us a constructor kill. Which is also one of two. So, Bloa definitely invested a bit more in Constructors. Not sure if Dan Warrior expects that. I mean, they themselves only invested in one at the beginning. And that means Dan Warrior might be expecting Bloa hasn't expanded as much as they have. Or at least would have if they hadn't just immediately spotted the other one down south. No bandits coming over to deal with it yet. And that... No, there is one. And the convict is escaping. There is some hope. No, the comic's still dead. But, no, it doesn't matter. The comic's still dead. The Glade's going to get away. This is this is a sad day for Bloa. Overextended with their constructors. Both of them. And now they're going to be slowed down in expansion. Their commander trying to help out, move forward itself to add a few more metal extractors. And to be fair, Bloa is ahead. But the problem now is they don't have anything at home. Like they get a convict at home, sure, but they've got to build the convicts, and they got to build the caretakers, or at least get a couple convicts to use it for assist build. And Dan, we're getting... Did they just get... No, that was that was two for one. Okay, that makes more sense. That's... Yeah. Bandits are a bit more efficient than Glaives in general. Glaive does manage to get the middle extra after kill. Bloa and Dan, we're now pretty well even on that on that score. Bloa, on the other hand, wants to make sure that nothing gets taken without them knowing. I mean, they really want to make sure of that, which is a risky strategy. Dan, we're coming in with the Reaver... Blow not aware of that, but that Reaver is going to wipe out the bandits if it gets close, so... Blow has got to be careful. The one thing going for them is the bandits... Ironically, the bandits aren't a line away from the Reaver, so they're not going to be wiped out immediately. Although, this is going to be... Oh, they're going to spot it. They're going to spot the Conjurer. This is... This is a dead Conjurer. This is an expansion that's been stuffed. So, Blow able to get revenge. Actually able to get the pacing pretty much back to even. Not really favored one way or the other, but pretty well back to even. Got their own caretakers. Dan Warrior just getting there first. So Dan Warrior is a little bit less production focused right now. Let's give Blow a small advantage. So Dan Warrior has already shifted over a bit to riot units, as well as grabbing an imp. And that imp is likely to hit this one last bandit. Can we close enough? No, not quite. Bandits coming in. Do spot... Oh, are they going to get away from the Reaver? They're not getting away from the Reaver. Wow, they're suiciding, trying to get rid of that Conjurer. I can kind of understand the logic, but no, that is not a fair trade. Even if they got the Conjurer, I mean, that'd be a lot, but... That's pretty close to Dan Warrior's base, and losing five bandits to get rid of one Conjurer. As important as it is to get rid of your opponent's Constructors, it's... That... I don't know. If it was only two or three, I'd say sure, but all five, no. And then the Conjurer didn't even die, so it was irrelevant. Same time, Dan Warrior over to the northwest, and currently running a small advantage when it comes to their economy. Still pretty even, though. 
Blow looking to lock out the expansion path over to the northwest. But Dan Warrior is looking kind of iffy. I mean, their conflicts coming in here. Got a bunch of bandits as well. The conflict isn't really the threat, but the bandits, eight bandits against a level uh, level two commander with light particle beam. No, the bandits are dead. The bandits have no chance whatsoever. Blow's commander being kind of clever with that, though. But yeah, no, the bandits will not survive. Light Particle Beam is an amazing weapon against, well, against light units. And, well, bandits don't have a whole lot of HP. I mean, granted, it did give this Lotus a bit of time to attack. But, again, not really enough to get rid of the commander. Honestly, kind of an unfortunate metal donation. At this point, Blowa is trying to contain Dan Warrior's commander. I don't know if that's really the best move. Simply because, well, first off, we've got counters for that. But more importantly, that's not blocking off anything to do the main base or really a lot of the expansion attempts. Expansions can easily happen over to the southeast without a whole lot stopping them. And at the same time, this Reefer is going around completely stuffing any expansion attempts from Bloa. So Bloa's kind of stuck at 26 metal per second. And not a lot they can do about that. Rogue's trying to help out. I mean, dealing some damage. Wasting some of Dan Warrior's metal, which is not nothing. But it's not a whole lot either, so I don't really see Dan Warrior having a lot of trouble here. They're just... They get rid of the rogues, which is a little bit of a pain, but they have the size. They have... They can easily just grab a bunch of glaives if they need to. And that's exactly what they're doing. Get a bunch of glaives out, use that to help get rid of the rogues. Though, with the commander being trapped like this, it's not looking too hot. I mean, that commander could go down. If that happens, that is going to be Bloa taking the entire northwest pretty much for the rest of the game. And to be fair, Bloa has taken at least knowledge. They have vision of the entire map. They're not exactly everywhere, but they know pretty much where everything is. Dan Warrior's commander still running into trouble, trying to get away, but there's nothing to run into. And ultimately, they're going to run into Bloa's commander if they escape along this path. And the rogues... Slowly whittling away, Dan Warrior's commander pretty much one or two salvos away from death. Same time though, the Glaive's trying to come in to save the day, but they're just not finding anything. And Bloa's commander, also with Light Particle Beam, coming in to try to just finish off Dan Warriors. And again, with that, that's going to be Bloa able to take the Northwest pretty securely. The Southeast has been taken by Dan Warrior, but losing their commander in the Northwest, that is a huge metal donation. 1,000 metal reclaim for Bloa. They should have the caretakers for this. Uh, more or less, 35 metal per second going in the factory. So they are more than capable of handling this. The main problem now, of course, is just energy, but that, that too is being dealt with with the Geo plant. So ultimately, Bloa is doing really well when it comes to economy. Little iffy when it comes to actually dealing with these glaives coming in there. Again, these glaives are intended to deal with the rogues, and while the bandits are going to be pretty cost-effective against them, question is, how many rogues are going to be damaged? How much territory is going to be lost in the process? And the answer is actually not that much. Dan Warrior really struggling to get in here and do a lot of damage. At least over on the south side of the map. Blowout, however, on the north side of the map, or northwest side of the map, getting wiped out as well. Tables turn once again for that northwest reclaim pile, and now it's looking like it's going to be Dan Warrior able to take that ultimately. Bloa, however, still managed to turn that into quite a lot of extra metal, into extra power, into a reasonably large army. And a reasonably large straightforward army, too. The sides really wouldn't last long in a straight fight. At the same time, Bloa ultimately may have control over the Northwest, sending some, con some convicts over there to take it. Which will be very helpful. Scythe will be revealed in a second. And will not be... Ooh. Well, I'm moving quickly enough. Bandit should be able to finish that off. Does take out the rogue, but again, the rogue's dealing way too much damage regardless. Blow it has really just spread themselves very well across the map. Not really too thin, because Dan Warrior's been focusing largely on artillery. They're trying to get rid of this whole... whole fire base that Blow had built up, and that means Blow basically doesn't have to worry about anything over to the east side of the map. The west side of the map is where all of Dan Warrior's army is, and even that, it's not really the best at dealing with rogues. 
The armor that was was taken care of the ba by the bandits, so that's, at this point, just a matter of breaking through Dan Warrior's base without losing too much. Dan Warrior with the gunship switch. A curious choice. Not that they're bad, they're just not really popular. So from here, probably... Let's see. Gunship. I mean, I kind of want to say locusts, just because that's typically what's done. No, Nimbus, of course. This is late game. Or mid game, rather. It would be Nimbus. That makes a lot more sense. However, Vandals were... They were thrown into the mix at one point. I think they got killed off. Oh, no, there is the one. That's eh, not really enough. You need, like, ten. Vandals are very defensive. I mean, as you'd expect for the shield bot factor, for the, for the factory built entirely around being defensive. Yeah, they're... Their main strength is that they take a while to get killed, but they don't have a very high damage. Which is fine, they're 90 metal leaps, they're not that expensive. So you can easily just get enough of them and then work from there. Oof, same time though, this Geo plant. Oh, it's not gonna stay long. Goes down. Bloa, however, does have at least high wind right now, so they can very easily rebuild that. They don't have to worry about excess for the time being. I mean, they might have to worry about it because they don't have that much build power in the main base, but besides that, not really. Same time, though, they're giving Dan Warrior time to breathe. And they're giving Dan Warrior time to rebuild their army, get at these Nimbuses. There's not sure what Blow is waiting for in terms of what they can actually do to pressure. They, I mean, unless they're trying to get more information, which they don't have any radar, don't have any sparrows. Actually, do they, have, they have radar here, but that's about it. Some of the main base that looks like it recently got... Where's the radar on the main base? Oh, here it is. Yeah, that got fairly recently built, so that makes sense. And now with that up, I have to deal with the Nimbus, but I don't think they care. I mean, just basically running artillery with the rogues, getting rid of all the lotuses. Should be able to go to the Geo plant on Dan Warrior's side. That's not a huge loss. They have more than enough energy as is, but it is still something. Same time. All, most of Dan Warrior's army over to the northwest, trying to take the northwest, but ultimately just being derelict on defense. Dan Warrior, they're liable to lose their entire... They're liable to lose the game right here. I mean, the Nimbuses are providing defense, but that's about it. Dan Warrior's taking some very serious blows here. Blow at the same time, wiping out their western army, their siege force. And that means Dan Warrior has basically nothing. They're locked into their starting base. And they have to deal with none of their defenses really being up to snuff for dealing with the rogues. Nimbuses are the only thing able to really handle that. Probably going to switch over to Swiss coming in here from Blow to help deal with that. Same time, getting some shields up as well just to mitigate the damage from the Nimbuses. But the rogues able to continue to wipe out the defenses that have been built up. And that means Dan Warrior is ultimately going to be quite vulnerable... These Nimbuses go down to just a standard push. Standard push, which is being very rapidly developed on the ridge in the middle of the map. Same time, though, the Nimbus is over in the southeast trying to defend, but really not doing much. The main story is really out in the north, or the north, in the southwest. Harpies are coming in here, but it's, again, feels too little too late. Reaver's doing an okay job, but again, Dan, we're... Everything they lose here is huge. Anything that Blowa loses, they can easily rebuild. Anything Dan where he loses completely wipes out their ability to rebuild at all. Dan where the defense is also spread. The bandits ripping apart their energy infrastructure. And also to some degree wiping out their metal since it does wipe out overdrive. Getting closer and closer at production. They can take out the production. That is going to be game. There is not a whole lot that can be done from there. Luckily for Dan where the caretakers haven't been, been taken out yet, but... The rest of the economy has been pretty much wiped out. Same time, Raptor's coming in here to get rid of the Nimbuses. Not really working out too well, actually. Like I said, kind of expected Swifts, but all right. Guess that works too. Regardless, Dan Warrior taking some pretty large blows as they go. And Bloa, again, they're able to build easily, and they can throw these Raptors out here as they're building up their main army. And also start getting reclaimed, though I don't see that happening, but they they could. I would seriously recommend it. And they are indeed doing that. They're, they have a convict up front that will be setting some reclaim gathering. 
Yeah, Blow at this point just needs to keep pushing. They're in a solid position right now. As long as they just keep the pressure on, Dan Warrior does have some, quite a bit of reclaim to work with, which is going to be a problem. Blow up. They have scouting. They will spot that. So they will at least be able to see, oh, hey, there's a bunch of vulnerable things out there. In fact, at this point, I'd almost recommend swapping over to probably Ravens just to start nailing all these conjure conjures. Just get rid of that reclaim option. That's most of Dan Warrior's economy right now is reclaim. Save for Reclaim, they don't have a whole lot going for them, and I don't know that Blow is aware of this. In fact, that's looking to start possibly staging a comeback over the eastern side of the map. Bloa doesn't look too prepared on defense there. Continuing to get up Raptors to deal with the air units, but really that's not the key problem. The key problem is, well, now you've taken the skies, what do you do about that? Like, you've taken the skies, you don't have a very confident ground force. Now you gotta gotta go in and deal with what's there, and you gotta get stuff off the ground. That's the key problem. And honestly, at this point, I don't see Dan Warrior doing or Blowa doing that. And Dan Warrior, as a result, is getting more and more reclaim. They're at parity in economy against Blowa, and they Dan Warrior has half the map that Blowa does. And they're operating a fraction of the territory, and yet, thanks to reclaim, they're totally in this. Of course, their reclaim only lasts for so long, but now Dan Warrior has to, or Bloa has to deal with what Dan Warrior threat as a result. That being said, it looks that Bloa largely has. The reclaiming conjurers are not long for this world. And with them gone, Dan Warrior's hopes of taking this game back fade rapidly with them. At this point, Bloa just needs to push. Do they even know they can? Like, yeah, they know they can. Oh, no, they don't. No, they barely have radar, barely have scouting. Honestly, I don't know why they don't. Like, you have... This is why it's like... Swift is also just useful for scouting. Like, I get... Yes, okay, Raptor is really good at dealing with air units, but... Swift is also decent at dealing with air units. And more importantly, you can figure out what your opponent is up to. So you can see what's going on and use that knowledge to know when you can attack. Which, admittedly... Dan Warrior, they're still kind of staying in this. They still have Reclaim going across the map. They're... Like, they're nowhere near done. Not for not for this comeback attempt. And that is the risky thing, is that ultimately Dan Warrior... They do... They haven't taken this Reclaim, and that Reclaim has been giving them some room to breathe. However, it looks like Bloa is kind of done for that. Dan Warrior coming in with... Something of a last-ditch attempt going for what looks like a Reaver drop. It has been spotted. The Raptors are coming in to intercept. Shouldn't last too long. The Charms are already pretty heavily damaged in the process. Reavers thrown into the ditch, too. First one lives, but it gets sunk. The second one just dies. And that is that. Dan Warrior wiped out. Largely due to just... A lot of early game stuff. I mean, Bloa really had the advantage for the vast, vast majority of the game. Dan Warrior, they had... They kind of had the Northwest, sort of, but losing the commander, that was a blow. Especially as Bloa was able to reclaim quite a bit off that. And then from there... I mean, even before that, Bloa, they lost a couple of early conjurer, or convicts. But they got that bandit to come in. They got it to push back. Ultimately maintain parity and economy. And then from there, it was just a matter of Dan Warrior went heavily for slings when Bloa was going for rogues, which, as we saw, do beat slings. And on top of that, Bloa was realizing, of course, there's going to be some counterattack that needs to be dealt with, so they dropped in bandits to help deal with that counterattack, which also deal with slings, no problem. So Dan Warrior getting a little bit obsessed with using slings to deal with the, the lotuses ends up unable to do much else. Now, granted... With Cloaky Bot, it is a little hard to find other options. Ronin do work, but they also suffer from the same problem. That is, they're going to be wiped out. Or not wiped out by rogues. It's kind of an even matchup, but bandits will take them out. But that being said, I... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like a better mix would have still worked. Danware had an even economy. They could have mixed the, ro the, the Ronin in... Sorry, Ronin. The slings in... With possibly Ronin, more likely with Glaives. 
which would have worked. I mean, it would have helped defend it. And then they kind of did, but really not enough, not enough invested into that. As you see, the armor value ended up really going in Blow's favor. Although, to be fair, Metal used... Danwari did have the advantage of Metal Income slightly for a little while, but it did not translate into army. And that was... This is when they lost their slings and commander and everything. So, that really didn't help. At any rate, that is going to be that. So, the next match is going to be between... What's it? Just a couple players that we haven't seen before. Well, one of them I haven't seen before. Epophanas and Doctor Doom. It's going to be on Ravaged. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>